Ciao, y'all. You know, just cause I can't speak Italian don't mean I can't cook it. So I'm gonna prove it to y'all today by taking y'all on a tour of Italy with just a few of my recipes. But first, we're gonna have to stop by Davis Proteus to pick up some tomatoes and onions. And then we'll head back to the kitchen where I'm gonna put together some wonderful chicken spadini. And then next up is a Northern Italian favorite, stuffed shells. And this recipe comes from my friend Barbara. Last, but certainly not least, it's my tiramisu. But this time, it's Savannah style. So y'all open up a bottle of your finest Italian wine and manja, manja. Me looking through my drawer, I'm looking for a picture because I wanna show you one of my computer friends. Oh, here it is. I'm actually making this lady's recipes today. My life is so blessed and so full in the fact that I get to make so many friendships with so many people across the United States that watch my show. And Barbara Platoni had noticed that I didn't make a lot of Italian dishes. So Barbara wanted to share with me some of her mother-in-law's recipes just in case I ever wanted to do a show about Italian cooking. Well, guess what? Today is a day, Barbara, and you're a lifesaver. So we're gonna make these recipes today, but before we do that, we're off to Davis Produce. Randy and Sherry down at Davis Produce carries the freshest veggies from all over the South, so I know they'll have just what I need. Hey, Don, baby. Well, hey, Miss Paula. How are How you are today? You? I'm good. Good, good to see you. You too. I got Italian night going on at my house. Come on back. I got all the best right. things for you. Come on back. I was trying to see if I could scope out me some boiled peanuts. <laughs> we done sold them all. <laughs> <laughs> or ate them all. <laughs> I need some tomatoes, Randy. Well, I got a couple for you here. All right, tell me what you got today, what you got in. We got these pretty red ones right now that are coming in from Ruskin, Florida. Mm -hmm. And then I got these uh, Roma tomatoes, which are doing a little Italian cooking. I and love Roma tomatoes. They are the best. Some people prefer those all year because they consistent in the taste and yeah. it's a good firm tomato too. I went over Texas sweet onions. They're coming, coming in, in right now. Right, They just started up. I think Sherry's got you a basket of oh, tomatoes good, ready. Good, good. Thank you, darling. There they are. Well, I will well, see y'all later. Well, thank you, Miss Paul. I got to go cook. You. Good you to see y'all. Bring us those leftovers. Bye-bye. I'm really excited to try these Roma tomatoes and some sauce. In fact, it's going to go on top of one of Barbara's recipes. And I also picked up some onions for the first dish that I'm preparing today. So what y'all say, let's get back to the kitchen and start cooking. All right, this dish I'm gonna be making is called Spadini's. And I'm gonna serve this as an appetizer today. I've never eaten these or fixed these before in my whole life. But Dustin Walls, a young man that's very near and dear to my family and I, loves these. And he was telling me about them one day and I said, well, I'm gonna be in the kitchen doing some Italian cooking. So I said, tell me about these little puppies. And he described them to me and I said, well, sounds delicious. So I think I'll try my hand at that. So we're gonna see what we come up with, with these sp spadinis. <laughs> Foreign languages get me, y'all. All right, so we're gonna start with a strip of chicken tender. And I've got some Asiago cheese. And from what I understand, you can use different cuts of meat for this. I understand that veal is real good, but as you can see, I'm using chicken today. All right, we've got those rolled up. I'm just gonna roll them in olive oil. And then I'm gonna roll them into seasoned breadcrumbs and then put them on our baking sheet. All right, I'm gonna saute these off. Now, Dustin told me to just put them in the pan and put them on into the oven, but I think I'm gonna brown these off just a little bit and saute the onions a little bit and then let them just finish it in the oven. It won't take them but just a minute. So we got our pan going and we're gonna let that heat up and I'm gonna add just a little olive oil. Okay, where's the phone? Hello? Hi, this is Mario Vitale, Molto Mario from the Food Network. Mario! 
I just wanted to call and say, not only do I love you, but I want to help you. I'm watching your show here, and I'm bleeding. Who's telling you what I'm doing? The whole <laughs> world knows what you're doing, Paula, particularly us Italians. Well, what's wrong now, Mario? This dish you're cooking, you're killing me with this pronunciation. I'm cooking spadinis, yeah. Isn't that what I said? No, Paula, it's spadini. I call it spadinas. Ah. <laughs> uh. Spirini. It's Italian. It's a beautiful word. Spadino. Uh, Spadini. Spadino. Spadini. Is that right? Uh. <laughs> Ciao, baby. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> I think you just ought to come down here and, and let me cook and him pronounce the words for me. <laughs> He's on my case. I bet if I brought him here in the South, he couldn't say some of our words the way we say them either, could he? I just wanted to brown those off. Now I'm gonna put them on our baking sheet and we're gonna stick these in the oven and let them finish cooking off because they're not done on the inside, but they're nice and brown and pretty on the outside. And before I do that, I'm gonna toss in our onions and just roll them around in that olive oil and those little breadcrumbs that's fallen off. That looks like that'd make some good gravy to me. Gonna just kind of pour those right over the spandini. <laughs> Hope that was close. All right, just distribute those onions and drop on the bay leaves. And in they go. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? And when we come back, we're gonna taste this, and we're gonna taste Northern Italian stuffed shells. Okay, we've got our spadini in the oven, and I'm going back to a recipe that belonged to Barbara's mother-in-law, and it's Northern Italian stuffed shells. And we're gonna start by browning our hamburger meat, our ground beef. We're gonna kinda just crumble that up, and I'm gonna go ahead and season this with a little salt and a little pepper. I think I'll drizzle just a little bit of olive oil over it just to make sure it doesn't stick too bad. All right, and I'm gonna toss in some chopped onions. And I'm just gonna let that brown away while I'm putting together our other ingredients over here. I've got three boxes of frozen spinach. Now you'll wanna make sure that you drain this really, really good because you want this to be nice and thick. Here's a tip for dishes like these. The frozen spinach works so much better because in order to yield this much spinach, I would have had to have cooked a, probably a sack of spinach that big. And it's still got that real strong spinach flavor. Okay, I'm gonna take our meat and just add it to this bowl. For this particular recipe, I've used a leaner grade of beef because I'm actually putting more fat in this. All right, now I'm gonna just take our softened cream cheese, kind of just work that in there. I love do-ahead things. You can do this actually the night before or the morning of and stick it in the refrigerator so you can have all of this part done. All right, I'm probably gonna have to wash my hands couple of times on, on this dish, but we're almost there. Gonna throw in a couple of eggs. Just break those up a little bit. And I'm gonna add the Parmesan cheese. You can put as much of that cheese as you want. All right, that's ready. And all we're gonna do is take our shells and stuff them. I bet you could even freeze these just like this. I bet that they would freeze well to this point and then just pull them out. 
and let them thaw and bake them off. All right, now I think that'll get it. One more hand wash. All right, now I put my tomato sauce in one of my canning jars and I'm gonna just pour it all over those shells. All right, I'm just gonna finish up a little cheese because I love a lot, a lot of cheese. Sprinkle this with a little extra Asiago. Then we're gonna cover it with tin foil and bake it for about an hour. Okay, I think our spadini is probably ready, so let's check on it. I think this spadini is ready. So let's see what we've got here. Can't wait. This is the first time, y'all, for Spadini to hit these southern lips. Oh, it looks really, really good. Mm, mm, mm. It's really, really good. I love the flavor of the breadcrumbs and that delicious cheese. I've got to take a quick break. I'm going to put our pasta shells in the oven and I'm going to give this one more taste. And when we come back, we're going to taste this and we're going to taste Savannah Tiramisu. And that one's mine, Mario. <laughs> We're back and I'm ready to take these stuffed shells out of the oven and I can smell them and they smell heavenly. Ooh. All right, let's take a peek and see what we've got. Oh gosh, they look delicious. And I can see that that's way too hot to put in my mouth. I won't have any lining left in my mouth. So I'm gonna let that cool. And while it's cooling, I'm gonna be showing y'all my recipe for Savannah Tiramisu, and it's very simple and very delicious. Now, I'm starting today with some store-bought macaroons that have been dipped in chocolate. And I've crumbled those up, and I'm gonna take my bourbon and let that sit while I'm putting the rest of our dish together. And over here, I've got two sticks of softened butter, and we're gonna throw those in our mixer along with some sugar. And we're just gonna cream those two things together. Now to the creamed butter and sugar, I'm gonna add six egg yolks. Now if you're wondering where the egg whites went, I beat them up earlier into the state of a meringue and I've got them in the refrigerator. When we get through, we're gonna be folding the beaten egg whites into our yolk mixture. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla and a half a cup of nuts. I'm gonna beat in our chocolate macaroons that have been soaked in that bourbon. All right, now to this, we're gonna add our melted chocolate. And the chocolate that I'm using is unsweetened. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to the refrigerator and get our egg whites and I'm gonna fold them into our chocolate mixture. <clears throat> I'm gonna just fold this in and look how good that looks. Now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna be using a spring form pan for our dessert. And I'm gonna need to spray our pan because when we take the side off, we wanna make sure that nothing sticks. All right, we're using a plain store-bought lady finger. So I'm gonna take them apart and just cover the bottom. Now we're gonna come in here and layer it with our chocolate mixture. And I'm gonna spread that around evenly over those lady fingers. And then we're gonna come back in here with another layer of lady fingers. Now 
Now we're gonna come in here with another layer of the chocolate. Just keeps getting better, doesn't it? We're gonna spread that out. Now we're gonna put our last layer of lady fingers on it and put them up close enough to almost make the size of a serving of pie. Now I'm gonna cover this and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and we're gonna let it set overnight. But I have another one that's ready. So we'll go in with this one because I really do wanna show y'all how I finish it off. And you can see that this is sat up nicely. Now I'm gonna gently remove our spring form pan Looks good. All right, and I think I'm gonna move it to our pedestal and finish it up. And I'm just gonna take our whipped cream, gonna come in between each of those lady fingers. And you can do this any way you want it. There's really no right or wrong way. And now for the center, I'm just gonna come in here and build it up with stars. And then I'm gonna take one of my little leftover chocolate macaroons and drop right in the center. And she looks beautiful, doesn't she? And now all I'm gonna do to finish her off is just dust her with a little cocoa powder. Look how pretty. Well, she's done. I think it's time to taste. These stuffed shells, I'm gonna come in here in the middle and get me a piece with a lot of cheese. It's still steaming hot. Not bad for a first-timer. Mmm. Can't hardly think about leaving these stuffed shells. But I just gotta try the tiramisu. Just looks sinful. So very good. I know y'all are gonna love it. I'm only gonna leave for a couple of minutes and when we come back, I wanna take y'all outside and show y'all the neatest trick about how to plant your tomatoes. Y'all not gonna believe it. I learned this from a country boy from Mississippi. can't wait to share this little tip with y'all. From what I hear, all, all Italian families, or most all Italian families, grow their own tomatoes because they take them very, very seriously. Well, I wanna show you a trick that Brandon Branch taught me, uh, a little country boy from Mississippi. This is a great way to grow your own tomatoes if you have a very limited amount of space. All you have to do is go find you a couple of bales of hay, and you can get this from your Agway, possibly even a hardware store. And you can see how it's bundled up with twine. Now you wanna leave that twine on your hay. And all you're gonna do is take you a sharp knife and just cut through that hay. And that serrated knife works real good. It'll kinda just cut right through your, your hay. And then we're just gonna dig it out then we're gonna put us some dirt in there. Just gonna pour a little real good soil. You wanna make sure that you use a, a soil that's good for growing vegetables in. And I'm gonna take our tomato plant and gently pull it out of the container. And I'm gonna just break up some of that dirt. And then just tuck it down in that hole that I made in the hay. And these are going on the patio. And I'm just gonna water this, and I'm gonna wait about a week before I fertilize it. And before you know it, we're gonna be eating tomatoes. And to give my precious little tomato plant a little extra added protection, I'm gonna just stick a few marigolds around in it because the smell will keep the bugs off. 
I've had so much fun in the kitchen today with this meal. It was really fun kind of getting outside my box and fixing other people's recipes. Barbara's stuffed shells is so good. And Dustin's Spadino is delicious. And I really like the tiramisu because it was my recipe. And I hope that y'all will try some of these and love them as much as I did. And so until next time, America, I send you love and best dishes from my kitchen to yours. Ciao, baby.